The world is a global village. And that's because information travels beyond boundaries. And on this morning on ITV, we guarantee unbiased analysis on topical issues that will educate you, entertain you. So join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Join us. Every Sunday to Thursday, 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. on your ultimate news and current affairs program on television this morning on ITV TMR. Join us. Thank you so much for staying on the program as this morning on ITV as uh, we do our first uh, major interview for today. Now, the call on restructuring of the country to be or not to be. Now, we've had a lot of calls coming from so, so, so many quarters. And yes, we've still had some people saying there is nothing to restructure, stop calling for restructuring. And then you have people like Wally Shirinka saying it's about time to negotiate the unity of Nigeria. Everyone needs to come and talk about it. How can you see it's not negotiable? It is indeed negotiable. So in the whole of all this, let's look at uh, the restructuring of the country. Don't forget that uh, the National Assembly, uh, I mean, the, the, the Leaders are there at uh, the at Lagos, in Lagos actually, and uh, they are talking amendments of the 1999 Constitution. Though some people still think, oh, they're just wasting their time, or they're just wasting resources talking about nothing. So today, this morning, let's really look at uh, the restructuring proper of this country, to be or not to be. I have. Um, Prince Greg Ogugwa in the studio is an astute politician, actually. <laughs> you know, astute politician. I call you that. You're welcome to the program, Thank Prince. Thank you very much. You. And uh, we're still expecting Phil Aroji, public affairs analyst. So when he comes, he will join us in the studio on this discussion. So, uh, Prince, yeah. what's your thoughts on the restructuring of the country? Um, if you, you know, one of the one of the major issues I've had on this ongoing um, crisis, so to speak, of restructuring and not to be, <clears throat> is nobody has really defined what restructuring is. Mm. I mean, um, I, I, I've got a degree in political science, and I, did, uh, and I went on and I did uh, a thesis on Nigerian government and politics between 1879 and 1979, which was about 100, 100 years of Nigerian government and politics. And till now, I've listened to all the narrative, I've listened to the commentaries, I've listened to the positions. I still don't understand what they mean by restructuring. There isn't any such political concept as restructuring. Restructuring is basically an engineering concept, which means taking apart um, what you have already put together and um, rebuilding it mm. and turning it to different purposes, you know. But, you know, there isn't such a political concept as restructuring. Now, I think what people mean is that there, there needs to be a redefinition of the uh, contractual agreement that is supposed to exist between the citizens and the states, and then the different states as it were. Now, you don't know where to start that conversation from. What citizens are we talking about? Is it pre-colonial citizens? And was it the conversation between those pre-colonial citizens and the colonial masters who now defined what the modern Nigeria is? Or is it after independence? Which means what kind of conversation, what kind of relationship that the different areas of Nigeria you know, have had with the federal authority since 1960? It's a very difficult, it's a very difficult concept to grasp with. But I think that there's a very serious misunderstanding of the basic concepts. I don't, you see, when you say you want to restructure, what are we restructuring really? Mm. Is it the federation? Okay? And if it were so, are we restructuring along ethnic lines or are we restructuring along geographical lines? Because if you're restructuring along ethnic lines, it really wouldn't work very far. If they, they, they tried that and it led to the civil war to an extent. And then if you're now talking about geographical lines, then we, we in Edo State have a very, very particular uh, matter to take up with that. 
um, I have seen so far that a lot of the arguments for restructuring has always been along ethnic lines. Most of it has been coming, you know, we you know predominantly recently from mm. the southeastern part of Nigeria, I mean the, the eastern part of Nigeria. Okay. Um, and they want what they call the Biafran Republic, you know, or the or, or, or Republic of Biafra. And they want that, or which is like autonomy for that region as Biafra. Or they want, you know, in other words, an expansion of their power and their authority within the Nigerian system. They want an extra one state to make them six eastern states uh, to, you know, to make up with the other six, six uh, states in the different geopolitical zones. That doesn't make any sense mm. because it means that they want to restructure along ethnic lines. Okay. Now, if they think that that makes sense, and that we should restructure along ethnic lines. What do you want the Edo people to say? Edo state has 17,800 square kilometers, thereabouts, of, of, of land. And that 17,800 kilometers is the size of Lagos, Oshun, and Ekiti states joined together. That's only Edo state. Edo state is bigger than Eboin, Abia, um, Enugu states joined together. Hmm. Um, the smallest component unit of Edo State, which is the Asan land, Edo Central, is bigger than Abia and Eboni States joined together. It's about it's about six or seven thousand square kilometers. You know? So Edo State as it is is larger than three of the eastern so called Biafran states put together. Now we're larger than at least two or three uh, southwestern states, that's Lagos, Osho, and uh, Ekiti states, joined together. Mm. So what makes sense? If we're talking about we should restructure along ethnic lines, then Edo state itself, you know, has the capability of producing a minimum of, of at least three states. If you remember that, Edo state and Delta state joined together, made up the Midwestern region. And that Midwestern region is twice the size, twice the size of all the five Biafran states or five eastern states put together. If you add all the five states in eastern Nigeria together, Edo and Delta are twice the size of that. That's just two states. So if, you, if, if they're asking for one extra state to make them six, so that they can have six ministers at the Federal Executive Council. Is that what you say the IPOB are agitating for? Well, they're asking for, for an extra states. State. No, they're asking for at least an extra state really? to make them feel uh, uh, part of the Nigerian state. They say they are marginalized. I and I really can't understand that because mm. if you look at the political process that brought up the principal officers of the current uh, uh, Nigerian dispensation, the president, the vice president, and Senate president and, and uh, um, deputy Senate president, you must realize that one of their key areas of agitation is that they don't have any of those key officers. Well, that's not the fault of the Nigerian system. Okay. Because if you, if, if you, if you recall that, um, Ngige, mm. who was governor of uh, Anambra State, was also be, now became a senator. He was the only APC senator mm. representing the East. You understand? In mm. APC. When Ngige went for a second term, he was voted out. Had Ngige been voted back as a result of political strategy, he had nothing to, he should not have had anything to do with political affiliations, but strategy. Had Ngige been voted back as the only APC senator representing the East, he would have yeah, been Senate, Senate president. president. Okay, um, let me stop you there while we were talking. But the field ROG worked in. You're welcome to the program. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, well, you met us talking about uh, uh, this issue. I know you heard some of the things Prince said. So let me ask you your thoughts on restructuring of the country. Thank you very much. Um, uh, for you to talk about restructuring, it means that there is uh, an existing structure uh, that needs to be restructured. Mm. Whether it is political structure or geographical structure, or ethnic structure, the reality is that if Nigeria does not restructure, Nigeria will die. Mm. There will not be Nigeria tomorrow those who are holding on to the present um, system and saying that there is no need for restructuring. I mean, I'm talking about whatever kind of restructuring, whether it's 
geographical, economic restructuring, political restructuring. Mm. Anyone who does not want it does not love Nigeria. That name Nigeria that we so love, if we don't restructure it, we will not find it tomorrow. Either now or later, Nigeria will not be in existence. That's the reality. That's a stark reality. If you go back to 1960, or pre-independence and then independence, uh, we have three regions. Talking about geographical uh, structure now, we have the northern region, we have the eastern region, and the western region. In 1963, by plebiscite, we had the midwestern region. Let's look at it. As of today, after many years, that one northern region has 19 states and has the SCT. 19 states have the SCT. The old western region, it was not southwest, it was just western region. Now I have six states. The eastern region has nine states. And then the midwest region has only two. How do you run a country that way? What has Midwest done that between 1963 and now is only two space states we have? Where was our people when one unit, one region, got 19? Where was our people when one region got um, nine states? That is the five in the southeast now. And then, of course, four from the south south, which is Bayesa Rivers, Cross River, and Aquaibo, because we're part of the eastern region. So you look at that political structure, and you are wondering what has happened. That one state, one region, now has 419 local governments, that's the north. The other has about 356 or thereabouts, the entire south region. Lagos and Kano State were created about the same time. Lagos has 20 local governments up to today. Kano has 44 local governments. And from Kano State, Jigawa State has been created, which has about 20 something or 30 something local governments. What are we not talking about? If we don't restructure this country, the country will not be there tomorrow. Then you come to where we are today. Who is the person that is a Nigerian that is happy today? Who is the person that is a Nigerian? from Mr. President to the least person that feels safe on the streets. Who is the Nigerian who goes out of this country and see how things are working with little or no resources and come to this country with all the resources we have, the human capital resources, the uh, mineral resources, natural resources, and then the, or whatever resources we have, and then the system is not working. So anybody who is saying that I mean, I'm not talking, I'm just a general statement mm. that they don't want Nigeria to be restructured, does not like it. Because the people who are seeing it all are the ones who are now calling for restructuring. The IBBs, the articles, prominent northerners. You see, people make right of and say, oh, uh, Masob or Biafra want Biafra, they should go and watch the video of the Civil War. Who said that getting your own republic or getting your own country will lead to civil war. Must you be forced to stay together? You can't force people to live together. I am not a proud Nigerian anymore. When I leave the shores of this country and I present my green passport and they ask me, are you Nigerian? I said, no. I am a Southern Nigerian Christian. That's the reality. I am not a proud Nigerian. I can't say, I cannot be proud to be a Nigerian. What is working? A distance of 10 kilometers from my house to this place took me almost two hours. I've left my house since after 6 a.m. for me to get here after 8 because of the bad road. That's even within the city. Where did the government of Nigeria get money from to build the FCT? Where, why can't that money build the southern part of Nigeria? and especially the Ninja Delta. The 2017 budget, the appropriation the Federal Minister of Works or the Minister of Works, Power and Housing had released now, there is no single allocation 
to the Benin Eho Ekoma Auchi Okeni dualization. Not one naira. Not one naira. And that's the worst road as it stands today. Death trap. People are dying on that road almost every other day. Not one naira. And you say we should remain in such a republic? We should remain in such and then nobody will say anything? No. Nigeria should restructure or there will not be Nigeria tomorrow. If Biafra want Biafra, let them take what they want. Because you can't force people to live together. Especially when the thing is not working. How come this agitation has not become so intense now? It became so because when our president will say 97 plus 5 percent, I don't know how that one add up. And then from appointments that he has made thus far in the last two years plus have actually re reflected 97 percent and 5 percent. Okay. And um, people have the right to ask for what they want. Okay. And people who are asking for instruction. I'm one of those asking for restructuring. It, it, it may not be physical restructuring. Mm. We need economic restructuring. Let's go back to the time where people earn their money. Regions, now we have states, earn their money. We have the Brace Commission, which, which comprises of the states in the South South. We have the Pandel, the Ninja Delta, whatever. So let's come together, earn your money, and pay money to the center. Okay. At least let's take time to develop our region before we start putting more money at the center. All right, uh, Pastor Phil. And I'm um, back to you, Prince. Um, mm. You know, what uh, Pastor Phil just, uh, he kind of pointed out one of the things you were actually saying, which is uh, uh, why should the Easterners, why should they agitate? I mean, they never voted any APC candidate. No, 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 I didn't say why. I just mm. pointed out the reasons behind. No, but you point. went for that to say if Ngigi had won election, the it would have been, the yes. The reasons why they were talking exactly. about marginalization at that level. Yes, but uh, I just wanted to ask you this. If I am a Nigerian, for instance, mm -hmm. and I have the right to vote whoever I like, mm -hmm. should that affect me negatively? No, it shouldn't affect you neg negatively. But then you can't have the right afterwards, after voting along ethnic lines. Mm. Because the only reason that they voted in Gege out was because he was APC, and they thought that APC was not an Eastern party. So they voted him out. The same thing happened in Edo State. If you remember the case of Bright Omohodio, when he was Speaker, when uh, Adam Zoshomole uh, uh, took over governance after the, the, the uh, uh, Court of Appeal, you had uh, an Edo North governor. You had an Edo Central speaker, uh, I mean, sorry, an Edo North speaker. speaker. And then you had an Edo South deputy governor. So the APC worked out a deal, and Bright Omohodio, who was in the PDP, then moved to the APC and became the speaker to represent Edo Central. You understand? So you now had Edo North as governor, Edo Central as, dep as a speaker, and Edo South as deputy governor. But what happened? They went to the elections, and Edo Central voted out Bright Omohodio because he, was, he, he had moved to AC at that time. And as a result of that, they no longer had a member of the House of Rep, you know, uh, the, the, you know within the ruling party. So you now ended up with an Edo North governor, an Edo South deputy governor, and an Edo South speaker. It's the same thing that's happened in, in the Nigerian situation. So, I mean, that's talking about politics. You understand? So you don't have a right mm. having voted out your own person because of partisan politics to now say that you have been marginalized. And you how don't... about uh, during appointments also? Oh, well, I, I mean I, I, that I, I, you don't but, need but to I go to point, the... I just pointed out something to yeah. you. How do you want to then judge appointments? Mm. Is it based on ethnic... Is it based on ethnic grounds? Or is it based on, based on geographical grounds? You see, there's a very major difference. For example, if you say that the south-south of Nigeria, for mm. example, has been very marginalized and we suffer economic deprivation and environmental devastation from the oil exploration and all that and that we really suffer from that and that we produce a lot of the, the wealth. Therefore, a lot more resources should come to the South-South. Have you considered that the fact, the fact that the Hausa man that lives in the South-South is poorer than the poorest South-South man? The Hausa man. Because he is, uh, so, so to speak, a foreigner. So he's going to have the double jeopardy of, first of all, being a minority within a minority state. Now, they're, 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 we have Hausa and Fulani people who are born here, whose families have been here for 50, 60, 100, year, 100 years, very easily. 
And then when you're now talking about marginalization, do you include such people? Because if you're talking about ethnic, ethnic, uh, uh, um, what's the word? Um, what's that word that they're using now? Restructuring. Mm. If it's based on ethnic lines, do you take into consideration those people? Or are you just saying that everybody who lives within the south-south region of Nigeria, geographically, because don't forget that the constitution of the Federal Republic allows you, as a Nigerian, to live wherever you wish to sure. and to own property. So a Fulani man can move into, for example, Edo State today, buy land, and decide to rear cattle there and own a ranch. And people will say, ah, can a Fulani man come and do that here? Or he can go to worry, buy some land if they discover oil there, you know, claim rights to that oil. That's what the constitution allowed. Sure. Now, but if you say we want to restructure, are we now saying that in our restructuring that we're not going to allow anybody from any other ethnic nationality to move into the South South and own property and become a citizen? It goes further than that. My brother was talking about the 19 states left in, in the North. He looked at the North as a homogeneous entity, which is not very true. The North actually has somewhere in the region of about 160 different ethnic groups, which range from the people in the, Niger, in the uh, Middle Belt, Benue states, uh, the old Benue Plateau, which is now just Taraba, I mean, uh, uh, Benue uh, state, Plateau state, Taraba, Nasarawa, and so on and so on, Jigal, all the way up and so on. You have a multitude, the majority of the ethnic groups in Nigeria are actually in the North. There was never a homogeneous North, and we have known that. And so it, it, it at times whips up uh, some sort of sentiment to say the North and look at the North as a homogeneous, oppressive, dominant group. It has never existed. Because when uh, uh, General Gowon, who was the first military head of state of Nigeria, when he was head of state, the, the, the Hausas and the Fulanis didn't take, uh, they, they necessarily didn't like that. And we saw that happen over and over. Every single every single geopolitical uh, zone in Nigeria, of the six geopolitical zones, I think practically every single one has produced a president of Nigeria. So I don't see where the call for, of the, the call of ethnic marginalization comes in. But if you're talking about geographical and economic marginalization, and then you're now saying that we should restructure along those lines, the restructuring will no longer be, it will no longer be a, a, a geographical or ethnic it will then be administrative and fiscal. What they are talking about, like for example, if for example the South South is producing so much revenue, how come we are getting so little back? You are mm. talking about fiscal deregulation, fiscal devolution of powers. Fiscal. That is taking care of within the ambit of the present constitution. It is a matter that the National Assembly can deal with. When people talk about restructuring and then they whip it up and then make it some sort of public uh, uh, situation. They can't define it. How do you want to define, how do, what do you want to do with the, the Hausa man who was born in Benin, whose father was born in Benin, and who speaks Benin, but his great-grandfather or his grandfather was born in Kassina? Is he no longer an Edo man? I mean, it doesn't make sense because it doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. So what is the basis for our restructuring? If we're not going to talk about financial autonomy, like I said, then you're talking about things you can adjust within the constitution. Mm -hmm. It is all very within constitution. My brother just talked about the bad, he said, he said bad roads. I don't know what bad roads he was talking about because I drove on those same roads and I came from GRA and I got here within uh, 25 or 30 minutes. Now, those roads are not, uh, most of them are, are local government roads. So if you're talking about restructuring, is it the local governments you want to restructure? Or is it the state governments you want to restructure? Or is it the federal government you want to, is that, how is that going to affect the local access between your house and the major roads, the, the state roads, and then the federal roads. I think we need to look um, a lot further than the, 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 the current narrative that is just basically based on a knee-jerk reaction, hysteria, and you know ethnic sentimentalism. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Okay. We need to look at the specifics. When we moved, when we, when we came up with the 15% uh, um, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, derivation, I think, or 13.5% derivation, it was uh, a legislative matter. It was dealt with at a legislative uh, 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 level. It was passed into some sort of law, and it has been going on since. If we need to take that further, then we need to go through it the same way, constitutional amendments, 
and do it the same way. If people don't seem to understand that the, one of the greatest strengths that Nigeria has is its population. We have a massive market of 180, 190 million people. That is one of our strengths. Because we are making a lot of money from oil, and people think that the oil is coming from, is coming from the south-south. So they are, then they are very willing to talk about restructuring, and then they are talking about how we are being oppressed and so on. I've just proven to you that the southeast does not have a basis for ethnic uh, uh, restructuring. They don't have that basis at all. Otherwise, we in Edo State, just like the pastor has agreed with me, would have a greater basis for that kind of restructuring. I'm also going to point out to you that it's not even as a result of economic resources or what they are bringing into the national uh, uh, kitty. Because in, in another eight to ten years, oil is not going to be of any value in the, in the world economy. Our oil is going to be selling for somewhere in the region of about $20 a barrel. And we're going to say, how are we then going to move forward? So if we're being short-sighted and we think that oil and gas is the future, then obviously we're not keeping an eye on that future. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it's a fact that oil and gas, fossil fuels, is a dying industry. Okay. In another 10 years, it's going to be gone. So we need to look much further ahead than thinking about the shallow sentimentalisms of, I mean, you know, it doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, do you believe in the Federal, Cap uh, Federal Character Commission? Um, Just give me a yes or no answer, please. You can't have a yes or no answer to that. Right, nice. I'll tell you why. Because in 1956, the federal character system was set up in 1956 by the uh, Lord Robert Willings Commission. And that was because when Nigerian component nations were working towards independence, the minorities, which is the middle belt, and then the south-south minorities now, mm. felt that they would be oppressed by the east, the west, and the north. And they wanted some sort of reassurance, or they wouldn't go into independence with those three major groups. Okay. So they set up the Willings Commission. And the Willings Commission said, look, there is no way you are going to be able to stop any sort, any sort of group domination of another group. Mm. What you can do is to guarantee the, um, the rights of every individual. Unfortunately, we have not followed that up. And we have gone and done it in the form of a quota system. And it doesn't work. If you guarantee the rights of every individual, then you won't have the problems of dealing with group rights or community rights and so okay. on. And so forth. So, you know, it's not a question that you can answer yes or no. Oh, okay. Um, Pastor Fio, you want to react to some of the things you said? Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, let me mention that uh, Bini City does not begin and ends with GRA. He lives in GRA. I live in Ikoboka. I live in Ikoboka, so they are two different as is. Um, when we talk about bad road, what has federal government got to do with federal roads? What are federal roads? That's part of the structure. Why should we be working? Yes, why should we be whatever it is called? No, 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 no. That's what we're saying. You see, you have Prince, to define. Prince, Prince, please. Okay. Yeah. What if, whatever, what whatever, whatever it is. No, you see, you have to Hold be on, it is time. Now, whatever please. it is, whatever it is, the present structure we have in this nation cannot work anymore. So we need to do something. As we speak now in this studio, the Joint Committee of the National Assembly on uh, Constitution review, they are having a retreat in Lagos. Yes. That's what they should be looking at. The National Assembly have asked for the 2014 uh, conf National Conference report that they want to debate on it, but whatever it is, the government is not willing to let them do that. If we must make progress, we need to take step to restructure. Whatever, whether it's evolution of power or restructuring, we must take step to change this system that is not working. If it is working, people won't be complaining. If it is working, why should we wait for money from Abuja? He has um, mentioned that, of course, which is true, that in the next 10 or so years, the value of oil in the international market will definitely go down. But before we get there, let's take the remaining money, to the remaining time we have, to develop the part of the country that produces the oil. It's very important. In 2016, we were told that, last year, we were told that um, there's going to be a, a, a coastal rail line running from Lagos to Calabar. I'm not aware that the ground has been broken. This is going towards the end of 2017. That budget year was gone. This is another budget year running. Nothing is done. And we are just talking that things are working. Certainly, they are not working. Um, a few days ago, the National Common Entrance um, uh, Exam Council also brought out the cut-off mark for common entrance to federal unity schools. Imo and Anambra State have the highest, 66. 
Sokoto has a thing, Zamfara has 12. How do you run a country like that? That's supposed to be a federal unity school. And these people that will take a um, cut-off mark of 12, where somebody from Edo is using 63, Delta is using 65, will be the one that will be running this country later. It won't work that way. Things must change, otherwise you won't find another nation, I mean a nation called Nigeria tomorrow. Everyone who is here today that is satisfied with what is happening, no problem, they can continue with the system. But the majority of the people want restructuring. It is not the tail that wags the dog, it is the dog that wags the tail. The people who are there are representing us. We elected them, the Nigerian people. I've never been in government. I'm not planning to be in government soon. I'm okay with where God has placed me. But the Nigerian people that I, I represent and I speak for want, are not satisfied with the present happenings in the country today. Not satisfied with anything. Is it power supply? Part of the manifestation of the manifesto or part of the promise of the present government at the federal level is that they promise that they will allow restructuring and whatever, a system that will involve, that will make it better for Nigeria. But it seems as if once people are in power, once people are in position of authority, they are no longer willing to talk about what they have promised. Do you run a system where promises are made and they are not kept from federal to state to local government level? How do you run a system, my sister? Where the, cons where the constitution allow me, I mean, uh, makes provision for three tiers of government. And most of the states in this country does not have uh, elected local government officials, including our own dear states. How do you run that system? The governors have pocketed them. There is the need for us <coughs> to look at the system that we are running and change it. And part of it is that people who earn money, we have over 250 ethnic groups. We are certainly not going to restructure along that line. People like he mentioned, a lot of ethnic groups, different ethnic nationalities in the, in the north, the middle bed, the, that's the, the, the people from Benue, Plato, and all the rest. We have a lot of them. They are not also happy. But when we look at the geographical landmass, that's why I started from there. The reality is that as of today, if we must make progress and have a nation that we will be happy and proud about, let us restore. We can stay together, carry the same name, but let each region, each region, earn their money, keep their money, use it to develop their state, their region, and then pay tax to the center. That's one. The second recommendation I'll make is this. If we continue with this kind of system, let's, let's um, amend our constitution to the effect that the president of the country should have one single term of five years. And the, the, the presidency should rotate between the south and the north and from region to region. And I recommend that right now we have it in the southwest. Let Mr. President finish his four-year tenure, which has a year and some months to go. Then we can begin from there for five years. Even if he wants to go a second term for that first five years, let him do it. He should be allowed to do it. When he finishes it, he should come to the south. This time around, he should go to the southeast. Let them do their five years. Then he should go to the north. He should go to north central. That's the middle bed. They do their five years. He comes down to the south. Then he should go to the southwest. And then they do five years. He goes to northeast, they do five years. And he can come to the south south and do five years. That's the only, that's the only way we can find equity. You talk about Federal Character Commission. People get job just like that. People get into position without the principle of Federal Character Commission. Not too long ago, the DSS recruited people, and they have not denied that report, that in Casino State they recruited 51 persons, and in the whole of the Southeast it was 57. How do you balance that? Where is the principle of Federal Character Commission? How can you find fees where there is no equity and justice? It won't work. One state, Casino, where the president and the DSS DG is from, got 51 persons, and the entire South is got 47. And these are the same 57. people that enter school with lower cut yes, mark. Yes, with lower cut of mark. How do you run a country like that? Mm. And you say we should keep quiet. No, I, is I, it possible? I think, I think you guys are jumping. You are making leaps of faith. Okay. First of all, it is not everybody in, the, in these areas that go to federal schools. Federal mm. unity schools are not the predominant schools in Nigeria. Mm. And I bet you today that if you look at the governors of, Edo State, of, of uh, Nigeria, 
I mean, the, the governors across the states of Nigeria and the presidents of Nigeria. I doubt if you will find very many who went to federal. Whoever government. went, it, it is our system that's wait, running. Wait, wait, wait. wait no, no, no it is our money that is running. Wait, wait, it's part of the various. Hold on. It's part of the various parameters that are not working. I also don't understand where you get the principle of democracy from. Because if you say that we are borrowing our democracy or that we are learning... We don't have to borrow, we can, we no. can create our own. Very good. Then. We okay. can create our in own. That, in that instance... If the so one we borrowed is so not working, let's create our own so and let it work. See, if, we're, if we're using the American system, you have, the, you have what is called affirmative action in America, where black women actually have a greater advantage than white men within that society. Black women, because they are minorities of minorities. You have affirmative action that promotes them. If, you, if, you, if, a, if, a, black, if a white man goes and, 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 and goes and interviews for the same job as a black woman or a Latino woman in America, the Latino woman who might even be handicapped has a greater chance of getting that job than the white man if they have the same qualifications because of affirmative action. In England, you have positive discrimination. So if you have a woman whether she's black, Latino, whatever it is, and a white English woman, uh, a white English man, go and apply for the same job. It is the disabled or gay or lesbian uh, African minority woman or Chinese woman that will get that job before a white man. It's called positive discrimination. So what you're saying? And it is done, it is done to balance the mix of, of, of society. Okay, That's so. what is done in progressive societies. Mm. So you can't use that as a basis to say that there's some sort of unity schools. How many unity schools are there in Nigeria? How many unity schools? How many federal universities do we even have in Nigeria now as compared to private the universities? That's, that's Ade, part, Ade, wait, but that's wait, wait, part wait, of the problem wait, that we have. I, I, I also and these you, schools are wait, run with wait, our wait, resources. Wait, wait, let me give you, you it doesn't matter. It, but it does matter. Is, no, it doesn't matter. It has because, to matter it now. It doesn't matter because you see, you cannot quantify. That's why everybody's talking. You cannot quantify uh, uh, resources, for example in the terms of only mineral resources or what you're bringing to the table. There's human resources. Of course. You know, and if you're investing, if you, have a com if you have a society that, if you have a community, for example, or a state that has a large population of people mm. that are majorly underdeveloped or uneducated, and then you have another smaller state. He was given an example of 57 people from Katsina State or something. 51. 51 people from Katsina State, and then 57 from the entire uh, 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 south, uh, uh, southeast. The, the southeast. Now, the entire southeast. Is only the size of Edo and Delta. It's, it's half, half the size of Edo and Delta. How many people were taken from the Edo and Delta? It means that if 51 were taken from Edo and Delta, then at least 102 should have been, I mean, if 51, if 51 were taken from, or 57 from the Southeast, then at least double that should have been taken from Edo and Delta. No, you see, that's, you see, that's in terms of no, landmass. No, 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 it's not landmass now. That's in terms no, of no, landmass. No, 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 if you look at the population, no, 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 what no, no, we are working, no, no, we are running on this country no, no, based no, no, on the no, states. No, 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 no. If you're talking about population then, then you cannot then compare the, a state the way, like Kano, yes. for example. You can't compare a state like Kano to a state like Edo. Do we have, do we have a is population a census figure no, but then, that has not been but then contested. You cannot, then, then you we, cannot, we, when there is no fairness, there cannot be. No, you cannot. There cannot be peace. You cannot conjecture on figures that don't exist. As much as possible, I understand your argument and I understand where you're coming from. But what you're doing is exactly what everybody else is doing. They can't tell the difference between restructuring and devolution of powers. You know. And apart from that, there are a lot of the laws that. Uh, 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 okay, you talked about states re re earning this and only earning that. What, who is stopping the states from raising internally generated revenue? Lagos State, for example, its internally generated revenue is more than 15 of the northern uh, uh, of course, states. Of course, of course. Lagos, Lagos and State we can tell you, and we can tell you the reason. So you, no, most no. of those, most of those IGRO, uh -huh. a lot of them come from VATs. The no, northerners, no, the northern no, states no, will no, not no, allow no, you to no, have no, breweries no, there. No, and Lagos no, bring them, no, bring them VAT, bring them VAT okay. from breweries, I agree. from Lagos, the and then take it to the center of the Guan Shia. Yeah? in Lagos, if you go to Apapa, for example, yes. or practically all the clearing agents and all that stuff are Igbo people. If you go to, for example, Obalinde and, you know, and all those parts of Lagos, most of the people living there are Hausa people. Good. You know? So all those people generate VAT. So you can't say that the houses because they are in the north. Nobody's talking not, about houses so or Ibos are not the rest. You can no longer do that 
it doesn't the present structure we're is about, not working. No, what structure are we talking about? The now? present you structure talk, of You talked about local governments not yes. existing, and you said even in those states. Of does, course. How, how you, does restructuring deal with Whatever that? it is that we no, have to no, do. No, no, no. We have gone beyond the state of whatever. How, how does it? Okay. You can't determine the, let the, me, the, let me put it clearly. the mm. destiny of a people by saying Good. whatever. Whatever. You, it's just like saying, oh, I want a car. All right, what kind of car do you want? Let you me, want let me put it clear. Or do you want a Mercedes Benz? Or do you want a, an SUV? Whatever. Whatever. Prince. There's some cars that you will drive that won't take you from here to Ubo. Okay. Whatever it takes, okay, no, whatever it, it takes, INEC, to ensure that before the tenure of a governor of the state go, expires, you have to go beyond they go time. contort election. At what Let's, level? At what level? That's what I'm saying now. At what level? We're not supposed to be arguing. You make your point, I make my point. No, I say whatever it takes, INEC, mm -hmm. to ensure mm -hmm. that before the tenure of the president or the governor of the state expires, they conduct election. We should have a system in place, a structure at the state level, either by restructuring our constitution. No, it's not restructuring. It's called no. okay, to, okay, to, okay. to amend our constitution or the electoral act to ensure that before the tenure of a local government chairman or the local um, the executive expires, we have local government election conducted. We should ensure that. That's all restructuring. Whatever it is, okay. let this country work. Okay. Um, I, I defer to you, whatever name you want to call it. The country as presently constituted is not working. Right. We must do something for it to work. It okay, Prince. Prince, to work well. Prince, Prince, hold on. Prince, hold on. I'm coming straight up to you. Okay, now it's uh, some people think, okay, um, there's even no structure. Talk more of restructuring. So I don't really know. So you think there is nothing to restructure, right? No, no, no. You think everything is okay? So no, no. we shouldn't be talking about no, no, restructuring? No, 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 no. There's a very serious difference. You see, restructure is not the word. Mm. Maybe I'm being very rigid in my definition. Okay. And I explained to you before that, because I, I actually did political science, yeah. I actually have a degree in that. So I have very rigid definitions for things like federalism, for things like unitary government, and so on and so forth. So when people say restructuring, I, I, I start to wonder where it fits into in all the things that I've learned over the so years. So what's your word? Uh, so Walesha Inca called his own, uh, 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 let's say, renegotiate. Renegotiating. Yes, let's well, renegotiate the unity have, of the country. So why, what are you calling yours? That's why we have the assemblies. Mm. Now, if you say that the assemblies are not working, they are not doing what they ought to do. Because I remember Ambrose Ali, when he was governor of, Edo, of uh, Bendel State, he took the federal government to court over the issue of revenue allocation. And we have seen that happen over the years. Those things are perfectly uh, uh, accommodated within constitutional amendments. But when people talk about restructuring, you know, and I'm thinking, along what lines? Okay, let, me, know, let, me, let me bring in this. Uh, some people think uh, um, the government of the day should adopt the 2014 Comfab report. What part of it? There are too many different parts. They say they should look at it, at least. First of all, mm -hmm. if it goes to the National Assembly, they could mm -hmm. start from there. Mm -hmm. In order to solve most of the problems they think they have in this country, as it were. Well, you see, he just talked about roads, for example. He talked mm -hmm. about local governments. Mm -hmm. Those problems are not federal government problems. They're state problems. So I don't see how restructuring at a federal level will deal with that. What I'm talking we'll about. We'll have more resources no, to deal no, with it. No, no. I don't, oh, we I have more resources. You. Internally generated revenue is not a federal issue. It has nothing to do with restructuring. There are some states in Nigeria that will not or do not generate enough funds to cater for what they are carrying on board. That has nothing to do with. What they're thinking is that if we create, for example, I'll use the Southeast as a perfect example. They're thinking that, look, we only have five ministers now. If we get an extra state, we'll have six ministers. But don't forget that the entire five states in the southeast are Igbos. So they are only half the size of Edo and Delta. I keep coming back to that. Which means that at least between Edo and Delta, we should have about 10 or 12 ministers. It doesn't make sense. Let's start talking about the implementation of the laws. The laws already exist. Internally generated revenue. For example, I just gave you an example that Lagos State is making its internally generated revenue is equal to 15 of the northern states. And as much as uh, um, um, everything else that the Southwest itself produces, and most of the South South. So, why do you think that we need to restructure to be able to get economic power? All you need to do is to increase your own internally generated revenue. That doesn't go to the federal government, it is only VAT. And VAT, Nigerian VAT is probably one of the lowest in the world at 5%. 
So I don't see what the argument is about. I see that a lot of people use the word restructuring because it is in vogue. So you think there's no need for devolution of powers? Oh, I believe that there is need for devolution of powers. Okay. But I believe that not only just the devolution of powers, I believe that there is, there is a need for the rigid implementation of the law. Because the Nigerian law, the Nigerian constitution provides for federalism. But in essence, in practice, what we do is that we have a unitary government. Now, under normal circumstances, resources are supposed to flow from the bottom to the top. Mm. But it doesn't work that way in Nigeria. The way it works is this. They take out the resources. They take out the oil from, from, from the bottom. And then the money goes to the federal government and it trickles down. So you have what you call a top-down approach. And then they expect that the money will trickle down like in a, in a pyramid. But it doesn't work that way. In America, that we're supposed to be copying its democratic processes, the money comes from the bottom and goes to the top where the local counties and so on and so forth receive the bulk of the income that comes in from that area and the federal government only receives a percentage of that. So do you not think it would be better if states pay to the local government rather than no, no, and pay to the federal local government? Local governments pay to the state governments, state governments pay to the federal governments as opposed to the the, 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 the federal government to pays the, to the state yeah, and the states all that all that is not restructuring all that is you know just the same way that we negotiated the 13.5 derivation mm -hmm. is the same way you can ne negotiate it within a constitutional amendment when you call for restructuring and people start to wave flags and start to shut down a, a particular economy part of the country on the basis of what they call restructuring it just doesn't make economic social or political sense that's what i'm saying mm. i'm not saying that there's no need to i mean every law every constitution needs const constant and continuous refinement you know and and the laws provide within the constitution itself for that re-engineering of the constitution for the revenue allocation system for governance for the creation of states for local government it's all it's all within the constitution i find out and i agree with the people who say that it is the frustrated politicians and the frustrated uh, politicians especially mm. who are calling for the restructuring you know IDB was president why didn't he restructure at that time the South South we had presidency for six years why didn't we restructure if that was what made sense if you're talking about the allocation of resources with all the resources that the South South has had over the last uh, 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 number of years including when the, we had a South South president what has it done for us he talked about the railroad, railroad system. It doesn't take three years to build a railroad system or the, the, the east-west coastal highway. It didn't happen. We saw the people who were agitating for, for who are agitating against marginalization, south-south marginalization. We saw them when they were in power going to build universities in Kotonu, going to buy houses in Banana Island, going to build buy mansions in Abuja. Is that what restructuring is going to bring? I've just pointed out to you too. If you say we should take restructuring, strictly, in stricto sensu, and look at it from the perspective of ethnic groups, then what do you want those states to do? We should have a minimum of three states here. Okay. Delta states too. Another minimum of three states. But how does that translate to good governance? Okay. That is the point. Implementation of the laws, rigid implementation of the laws, and then, you know, the understanding that it is not administrative law that makes a nation or makes a people. It is the culture and the will and, this, and, and, the, and, the, and the mindset of the people. Because I still posit that the Fulani man in the Niger Delta is more oppressed and more marginalized than even the South-South man. Thank you, uh, Praise. Um, whatever, whatever name we want to call it, I agree with him with the last point that the resources of the nation should go from bottom up. Thank you. That's the cause. And that's exactly what I've been emphasizing. Give us our resources. Let each region East state, geographical location, I mean geographical zone, whatever it is, keep their resources. Local government. Keep their resources and then pay taxes to the federal government. How do you generate power from a hawa? And then you upload the power to the national grid. A hawa is a community on the Bini Bypass. You upload the power to the national grid and begin to distribute. And the host community have no power. When are we going to have it get this done right? How do you generate money from the South South or Ebene, for example? Go to Orion, that has the largest oil wells in Edo State. Orion is one of the oldest local government in this country and is one of the underdeveloped. Apart from the Comrie governor who did some major communities out of um, Orinigbe, um, Abudu, and Igbanke, Orion was like a jungle. 
and it has oil well. Yet the money is used to develop the FCT and develop other parts of the country. And people shouldn't talk. A system in a country where for more than 30 years we have not been able to generate 5,000 megawatts of electricity. We should continue with that way. Whatever makes a man from the Niger Delta takes our money to go and buy, buy houses in Abuja or Banana Island or build universities in Kotonou, that's part of what we should restructure so that we can find them. Right. Whatever. Whatever makes them okay. take our money. Whatever makes them mix another country, another state more attractive to you. We talk about VAT, I mean, um, IGR in Lagos. The companies that run in this country are in Lagos. Lagos is the economic net center of the nation. How many companies do we have in those states that can employ people and then we can generate IGRO? That's all because part of the IGRO is from a pay. Right. Part of it. How many factories, how many companies do we have? How many jobs do we have? The IGRO in the city, people who don't have jobs, at what time will they pay money or pay tax to the government? So my point is this. If Nigeria do not restructure, Nigeria will die. Okay, thank you so much, Pastor Phil Aroji, for coming on this program this thank morning. You. And uh, Prince Greg Ogugwa. You know, when I was introducing you, I did say you are an astute politician, and of course, you've just proven that oh, on this great. platform. Thank, thank you. you so much for coming on the program. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we've heard it, uh, whether we like it or not, we know the truth because they say he that wears the shoes and walk a mile with it knows where it pinches because it's not just enough to wear the shoe and sit down one place you need to walk around with it to really know if really uh it fits and it's okay or not but whatever happens something needs to be done and i'm sure that's what the national assembly members are doing in lagos presently we hope that at the end of the day they come up with something positive so that um the country will surely move forward.